bridge wear you know, the mask. Wear the mask? Yeah. Why did you wear the mask? Well, when you read the book, it will be explained to you, but I'll put it through you. I, was, uh, I met Count Bartelli in uh, probably 1959. I met Count Bartelli. And when I lost this thing, you all noticed that's gone. When I lost that in, in uh, between 1962 and 63, Jeff said, you've done, you've done what you've done now. You're not going to go to the Olympic Games. Because I was training to go to the Olympic Games in 64. You're not going to go, make yourself some money. I'll get you in the rest of this. And he introduced me to Arthur Bright, who was the best in promotion at the time. Right on promotion. And <coughs> I, I've been around with Jeff so long, I, I wanted to be Cam Martelli in a funny sort of way. So I thought, well, how do you make a, a spectacular uh, entrance into a wrestling thing? I've been to lots and lots of wrestling shows, you see. I've seen, I would say in those days, 95% of the wrestlers just waddled in at a dressing gown and a pair of trunks. And they were very boring until they started the match. I wanted Kendall to be sensational from the moment you see him. So when he, whenever Kendall's there, people go, what's that? You know? And so I create, I, with the meditation, Ken Shirabi, created the Kendall Energy. And Kendall then started to take over my life. As I got into Kyushin Do, which is Ken Shiro's system, I found that Kendall kept on coming more and more into my life uh, as a persona rather than just a wrestling gimmick. And as it went on, it became more and more in that way. I think the gimmick fell away and the, the persona took over. When Kendall first went to the wrestling room with Jim Rosie, of course Jim Rosie was a big villain, I suppose you are. Kendall was going to be a baby face. Because Count Bartelli is a baby face, isn't he? Yeah. So I got this idea that Kendall Nagasaki is going to be a baby face. Of course, we got into the ring and the others go, boo! Think, oh, what's that? That's not good, is it? <laughs> <laughs> That's not what they do for Bartelli. <laughs> <laughs> so we got on, Jim Rosie sticks the fist on the old cheering. And so really, the, the audience decided for me that Kendall Nagasaki wasn't going to be a baby face, because I wanted him to be. So I, you know, I prefer you all to love me than dislike me. But it wasn't to be. You know, the audience themselves, the people themselves decided that whatever Kendo was, the imagery, the Japanese thing, yeah. the old persona was available. Yeah. And you can't swim against the stream, can you? Yeah. We both went down that river, you know. Yeah, I mean, just became, of, but, actually like the villain as opposed to the... Yeah. I think you've got to have a villain, haven't you? Yeah. Yeah. The show. Yeah. I think the villain does play the biggest role, yeah. and maybe face just have to do the comeback. The villain builds the atmosphere and builds, paints the picture. Then the baby face just you know puts the puts the frame on it, doesn't it? <coughs> but um, when I decided later on to be a baby face, then I dropped the mask again. You see. Yeah. So I, it was very difficult for Kendall in that uh, guise to be a baby face. In fact, I think it's impossible. So <coughs> you know, there's no point in fighting it. You just no, uh, let's do it. It's what you want. It, yeah. It's what we'll give you. Mm -hmm. Yep. Does that answer your question? Yes, thank you. Any, what other questions would you like to ask? Uh, yes, sir. Tr uh, trouble wrestling question there. Uh, have you a favourite match, a favourite opponent, and roughly how many matches do you think you've had? Oh, countless. Yeah. Lots and lots and lots and lots. Favourite, favourite match, favourite match. It would depend for what reason. I would say one of my favourite matches was the Count Martelli and Mask, because that was a sort of watershed moment, wasn't it? You know, you're this young guy that's come into the wrestling business, uh, it's struggling to do with all these these difficult old buggers. A lot of those early wrestlers, those old timers, were right tough old sons of whatnots. And they, they were there, they did it to make you look like a monkey. Uh, you know, like the, the likes of Billy Owls and people like that. They didn't they didn't work with each other like they do now. They were actually made wanted to make you look like you were no good so you didn't get the dates. Uh, so you, you were fighting all the time. But the bar I tell you things, so I could reach this nineteen sixty six. I've come through this and I've had to fight my way through. <clears throat> a lot of people trying to make me look as though I don't, don't know what I'm doing. But unfortunately for them, I do know what I'm doing. Because I trained the judo and I went to the state in, in uh, Wigan and I trained there for three years. Uh, so, but the Bartelli match really was a watershed moment. And for Jeff Camp to actually do what he did was great. And I appreciated that and it was a marvellous match. And the atmosphere was so electric. A, a, a match is not is made by you people. Uh, when it's the audience, it's, it's, it's the rapport you get with your audience. 
And when they're with you, and when they're really involved in it, then it becomes something really magical. So we couldn't do it without you. It wouldn't be the same without you. That's the, you know, the rest of it. So I think if you're going to single one out, it would be the Count Martelli unmasking the Hanley in 1966. And what's your favourite opponent? Favourite opponent? Yeah. I don't think I've got one of them. <laughs> <laughs> I'll come back to you later. <laughs> uh, I, I don't think I've got a favourite. They're all, they're all good for different reasons, aren't they? Uh, can I leave it for a minute? Yeah, yeah. yeah come back to you. Come on, you know. when, when you um, face somebody like Giant Haystack, yes. Kendo knows he's, he's going to win. Of course he does. Of course he does. <laughs> <laughs> but, 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 how much? You said you're out Who is this person? <laughs> <laughs> Good, good thumping. How much does it hurt? Well, how much does this actually? Yeah. How much does it hurt? Good question. Yeah. Well, have you seen the size of it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> A lot depends on where he lands. <laughs> he, I mean, as far as he's concerned, he's, he's far too big to be a danger to you. Uh, I mean, if I wanted to, I could move around him and soon have it on his back. You know? you have to. But that's not what I've got to do, is it? I've got to make sure that I've got to make this <coughs> guy look, or Kendall's got to make this guy look like me. Got to make this guy look like something and, and we've got to put a show on. But if, if, he, if you put your... The problem with professional wrestling is that you put yourself in a position that you never would do with straight wrestling. Straight wrestling, by the way, is catch wrestling, which is called submission wrestling. And that's what you learn at Wigan. And the best one in the world, in my opinion, was Billy Robinson. And Billy Robinson was the daddy of catch wrestling. I don't, I've never seen anybody that could have Billy Robinson. Anyway, if you don't catch wrestling, then you can you look after yourself, you can move around. But you let opponents like the ex get in things, throw you on the floor, jump on you, don't you? Now you are, at that moment, in his hands. Because if he decides to slip, and, and instead of landing on you with that big, belly and land on you with his elbow hard in your ribs or in your sternum, he can do you a lot of damage because he's 30 on stone with it. So there's a lot of, you have to have a lot of trust in that guy to lie on the floor and look up at him as he's coming down because you know there's a lot of hope going on here. And even though you're a big tough guy, if it hits you wrong, you're going to be in trouble. I suppose it's like your opponents must have faith and trust in, in Kendo when you do the role. Because you could well, do an awful lot of damage on it. You need the kamikaze cross, don't you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, they, they obviously do trust me. Yeah. In fact, I hurt myself more with that than I do them. Because if they, and it's their fault when it happens as well. Because if they grab me, they drag me into the back first, but the first thing I hit the back is in the head. <laughs> 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 but, but if they, if they, if they go loosey loosey like that, do let them do it. No, 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 If they go loosey loosey like that, and I can go, I can hit them go like that, and I roll off and roll this way. And I barely touch them. I'm giving the, giving the secrets away. Yeah. <laughs> but it, it doesn't, they won't get it as long as they do as I ask them to do. If they grab me and only two of them, then they end up with my weight and I end up with my head hitting the floor. So I've had several people who've done that and not been, not been confident enough just to lie loose, and they've grabbed all of you and you can't get rid of them. They're like, you know, to the bank, you know what I mean, don't you? So, that's the danger, and you can't get hurt, but I've hurt myself several times. And people come out of the ring saying, bloody hell, that was hard, what are you doing? It's so your fault. <laughs> <laughs> you didn't hang on that one the land. I'm giving the secrets away, you know? I bet you all know it's a show. Yeah, yeah. it's a show. Is it? Pardon? <laughs> 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 oh, sorry. <laughs>